See, when you talk about unbelief, you say, I'm not willing. I, I'm not willing to believe that. That's, that's unbelief. I don't believe that. Doubt is another thing. It'll still hinder you just as much, but not hardly as bad as unbelief. All you have to do with doubt is just find out what the truth is and just say, well, I believe the truth. I didn't know before, but now I do. But when you're an unbeliever, you say, well, I don't believe that. And you can't have it. And all those things that God did, I mean, you think about them. Parting that Red Sea, they walked over on dry land. They got out there and God fed them manna. They got to complaining about that and God fed them quail. Quail come in by the thousands. Hundreds of thousands, I guess, to feed all that people. Water came out of a rock. Many, many happenings. But you know what? They wouldn't believe. And the Bible says in, in Psalms that they turned back and limited the Holy One. They limited Him. How did they limit Him, Brother Jonathan? By their unbelief. That's how you limit God. God is limited to, to what you believe. That's the only thing that limits God. He Himself, apart from our believing and and receiving is, He is awesome. There is nothing impossible with God. And there is nothing impossible to them they believe. See? Now most of people, most people have practiced not believing. If they practiced as much believing as they did not believing, they'd be real believers. Amen. 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 Every time you sing something in the Word, and it might be foreign to you, it might be strange to you, and if every time you said, I believe that, instead of saying, I don't, we don't believe that, if you'd say, I believe that, brother, I tell you what, you'd be in a better shape. Oh. Praise God. You'd be in a better shape. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. So all things are possible to him that believes. And it goes on up to where he told Moses, he said, well, you're not going to enter in either. Because he, he did things he shouldn't have done. He said, you're not going to enter in. And these people, I think it was from 20 years old and up, are going to die in this wilderness. But not those, because they didn't rebel against me. Are you hearing? And it come time for Joshua to take over. And those people had died. And he told Joshua, he said, Joshua, you meditate in my word day and night. Observe to do. And he said, I'll go with you as I was with Moses. He said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, I have to turn over there to read. He said, then you'll make your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. Now, we find there that that's the will of God for Joshua and all those Israelites. It was God's will that they're going, and listen, God is honoring His Word and His promise. He always will. His Word goes before Him. It's always out. And He'll work His Word. Amen. Amen. And He's looking for believers, not doubters. If you read through the Word, anybody that doubted got very little, if anything, from God. So he's not looking for doubters. They're everywhere. He's looking for believers. Amen. 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 Yes. Yep. 
He told Moses to send out those spies. Go into Canaan. Spy out the land. Moses told them, he said, go up and see. See what kind of land it is. See if it's good. Told them to be of good courage as well, you know. And here they came back, 40 days. They said, yes, it's a land. It's a good land. Well, wouldn't you think? That's what God said. He said it flows with milk and honey. The promised land. And here they came. And they said, yes, it's a good land. He, they said, but, but. But there's giants in the land. Well, God knew they were giants in the land. He knew it. 